already. <laughs> okay, call the meeting to order. Um, by seeing that we're pushing the meeting a little bit this morning to get done, we have to be done by 11. Is that all possible? 10 30. So, 10 30. <laughs> oh, okay. So, if I cut you off, I'm not being rude. It's just trying to get done in time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's start out with the introductions because uh, we got a lot of new faces this morning. Um, I'm Andy Cronin, Bush Chair. I represent uh, District 5. Bill Rokam. Supervisor, represent District 3. Leo Speltz, Supervisor, representing District 1. Terry Mueller, Supervisor, District 4. Josh Elsing, Supervisor, District 2. Sheila Harms, County Water Planner. Uh, Lance Fussing, Resource Specialist here for District 3. Lacey Conkle, Winona County Personnel Department. You really want me to say something? <laughs> Just your name. <laughs> Paul Schollmeyer, Visitor. Wanda Anderson, Office Administrator. Bill Bunt, District Manager. Sue Lenny, District Conservation. Uh, Steve Jacob, Willow Conservation Corps Intern. Amanda Gentry, Resource Specialist with the District. Oh, your first name was? Joe. Joe, okay. I didn't know it was Joe. Okay. Thank you. Um, any public comments this morning? Any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, go to the agenda. There's no changes because this is the same one that I have. Okay. Motion to approve. Move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I've got extra Second. Well, guys, we got to keep it going. Yeah, second it. <laughs> Go. Motion made and second to approve the agenda. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed name. Motion carries. Move approval consent of the agenda. consent agenda. Second. Motion is made to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Group River Watershed. One watershed, one plan. That's your third plan packet. I did not get one of them. Should be in your list will be already in it. I didn't get that. There we go. That's right. Probably the only one that pays attention to it anyway. Unless I miss it right here. Oh, is this it? No. No. Okay. 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 Treasurer's report. Any questions then? Only one new check wrote out of it? Huh? Only one check wrote out of it? Um, there was one that didn't cash your check from um, last month before. They mm -hmm. deposited it after July or May 31st. That's the 610 one? Or what's that? Um, I usually keep the checking at 10000 so there's there one check came back for 5269 after May 31st. Okay. Move approval of the treasurer's report. Second. Motion made and approved. Motion, <coughs> motion made to approve the treasurer's report. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Payable. Payable. So if you want to look at your second page, the back of the second page, mm -hmm. it has uh, one bill payable for the last for DC. They actually. We normally wouldn't be doing this this month, but uh, they forgot one that last fall for a green speed project. So we're going to give them a payment on that. Um, that helps close out one of the work plan items in, in this grant and gets us closer to closing out this grant. And it, it has a lot of other um, cost shares that, that went to it. This is just a, Move to approve. Second. Motion made to uh, approve the payables. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 
motion carries. I guess I didn't point out it's, it's the stuff in red, the 23. Just the yeah. single one, Penny. The 2363. Yep. River update, Daryl. So, the, as far as update, um, with that payment, that gets us down to 7% balance on that grant. Um, so we have, if you look at the back of the last page, there's 59,000 in change left in that grant. And that expiration, that grant expires December 31st. There's agreements with, the, with all the other districts and counties, those expire the end of October, so we have time to close out the account. Um, we're, we're going to be, we have a policy committee meeting on the 21st and we'll be asking to amend the Exhibit A because uh, because we're coming down to the end of grants, we need to shift a little bit of funds around between Dodge and Olmstead, the SWCDs, so they can get that money spent before the end of the grant. Um, we'll also be asking to amend the uh, policy for the River One Watershed One Plan to allow Mauer SWCD to offer CRP con contour strips. Um, they have incentive payment for 10 years. We want to extend that to a 15 year because most people are signing up for the 15 year CRP instead of the 10. So, those are just a couple things we'll be asking the policy committee to do. That's basic stuff. That's all I have for Is that meeting going to be uh, real? I think it's going to be either way. You can attend it live or virtual. Okay. Okay, grants, agreements, contracts, and cost share contracts. There's soil and water or cost share system contract. Uh, oh, no, gotcha. that's this big sheet. And there's actually no new contracts. We have general openings, um, but it's just kind of an update. Um, we do have a couple projects in the Brook River watershed that have been completed, but we're waiting on other payments, so we know how much we can give to get up to 75%. Um, we have another cost year contract that, that will be coming real soon, um, but also we're waiting on what other sources are going to be uh, so we know how much our contract can be for and we're also waiting to see if we have slippage from the ones that have just got completed because this is also in the road and if there's slippage then we can roll use some of that on this on the new contract um, and we also have a couple other projects that didn't get other cost here and so we're hoping that hoping the landowners will sign up for our state cost share on those And this just gives you an idea of what projects are still out there. Again, four, contest, four projects still out there. We have five, but one of them is one that we'll be bringing for payment next month. It's already done. So when's Dwayne Tim starting his? Um, as soon as he can find a contractor to give him a bid that's uh, reasonable. <laughs> I see it's pretty high. Well, is that on the west side or the east side of the farm? That's the, at his home site. Oh, that's right. We talk, Yeah, that's right off yeah. the back side there. Oh, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Gotcha. Right. That's his the, home site. The con, yeah, that, he lives in the home right there with the. Yeah, but I was just thinking the county line. He's oh yeah, he's side. just that one's still just in too, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I realize it was. It was. I was just thinking. I was thinking that that his farm split that, but no, that's down there a little bit. Yeah, yep. concrete and steel costs are up so high right now that um, he hasn't gotten any favorable bids yet, and he's trying to find something that's a little bit more favorable mm -hmm. to work within the confines of the caution that we have for him. So. Gotcha. Yeah, that kind of just goes right down into the valley. Mm -hmm. yep. He does have a pond there now, which would collect mm -hmm. most of it, but you don't want it collecting in the pond either, so. No. Yeah, but he, he does pasture on those down mm -hmm. below, which is kind of nice. He's done that for years. Yeah. yeah. What does vegetated treatment mean? That's the filter strip, the grass filter strip to treat the runoff water. 
and that's going to cost thirty seven thousand dollars concrete work along with a stacking slab um, okay so, yeah so he's got a the concrete work to hold the solids back and get the water to the vegetated <coughs> treatment strip okay he's got a feed lot there for like young stock and different things and yeah. there's a need mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a definite need Okay. okay, agreement, amendment, a board action of the group of the Young Soil and Water Conservation District. So the, the uh, 319 grant um, got extended to so, uh, July of 2022. So uh, the actually the contract will probably go down. Our agreement was to do actually a couple of these feedback projects can be extended also to July 31st, 2022. And we also got a little bit of an increase in the funding so we can use the full 15,000 for each of the two um, feedback sites. So we just need to go with that. Those are the changes. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion been made to approve the changes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. State of Minnesota Professional and Technical Service Contracts. So we get uh, reimbursed for working with landowners, um, doing the easement delivery, promoting the program, assisting the landowners with their application process, doing site inspections, imposing reporting, and everything like that. And what they do is they give us fifty dollars per contract for per easement and we have eighty two easement. That would be forty two forty one hundred dollar um, how do they call it? Technical service contract. And uh, that usually comes like next week. It usually comes a week after our board meeting. So we would ask asking if you would authorize me to sign. This one you already signed. Did I already sign this one? Yeah. Because it's a recorder, you can sign it. Okay. We're just letting them know that we're doing it. Oh, that's one of the authorized things that we, you guys will approve. So this is just not the, sorry about that. So it says expires June 30th, 2025. That, what does that mean? I, I don't understand what Bowser does. That's, that's what they have in the agreement. But it's just for the this next fifth school year. We'll get a new one next year. Yeah, is it? I don't. <laughs> what expires? The, the agreement does. Well, the contract does. But I mean, the contract is you go out, you do it once, and you're done. Right. It also right? includes if we would get a new contract, oh. we can invoice them for our time and stuff. Oh. So we have through 2025 to do that. So. Gotcha. But they'll give us a new one next year. Anyway, yeah. So. I think that did coincide with the master joint powers agreement that we have, and then the sport order falls under that. Hmm. And there's no board action required on that? That's just an update? Yeah. Okay. State of Minnesota Professional and Technical Service Contract. The inner groundwater level monitoring agreement. This is the year 2020. Sorry. Um, this is the one that where we. Uh, go out and we do four visits to their well over in Whitewater and take manual readings and download their automatic logger information and then submit everything to the DNI. And uh, it's $30 a visit, so it's $120. Um, but it, this is the one that usually comes next week, right after a board meeting. So we're just asking if you approve that I can sign DocuSignments. Do they pay us thirty dollars to drive out there and look? We we usually try to do it while we're out that direction. I was gonna say, that uh, hardly covers it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd ask for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really it's been good information. We've been you know she can keep track of what's happening. I don't know if they've been given an update or not. Also, um, they haven't. Um, I guess, but I mean, I have access to read the data that we downloaded and. Um, and we did, was that last year or the year before where you noticed a big change? It's the groundwater level has really gone down um, this last, uh, uh, well, the level from last year at this time to now, it's 
down quite a bit, and I don't know off the top of my head, I can't remember if it was, it was like a foot or something like that, which when you watch it over the year, it goes up and down a little bit, and it seems to go up at the same time of the year and down at the same time of the year, but right now it's about a foot lower than it was the year before, so. Everything's lower, though. And, and yeah. for groundwater, a foot is a, is a big difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Make a motion for you to dock your sign. Second. Motion made second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Can, can we ask for, I mean, can we say something like, hey, you know, 30 bucks doesn't even cover our fuel and time? Or is it? You mentioned it before, last year, a year before, and it's, it's all that they're allowed to. Um, Mention it again. <laughs> we can always say no. Right. But it's good because it does help cover administrative some of the yep. costs, so we might as well take it. It's nice for us to be, have access to that yep. information to get an idea of what's happening out there, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What well, is this? It's over... Uh, is it government law or a private law? The DNR filled two of them actually side by side. For what um, purpose? To monitor ground water level. Okay. Where they're, are they? They're in the same aquifer. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, they're usually just a touch different from each other. They're like 15, 20 feet apart, and they're usually just a few inches off from each other. Um, it's off a of borderline drive. They've got county or uh, state land back there that they've got the two wells drilled into, and it's just for monitoring groundwater level. So they kind of throw the hill, they're not the valley. Right. Yeah, they're kind of down off the edge just a little bit. They're not on top of the hill, um, but they're not down the valley. I don't, I'm not sure what aquifer they're in, but they're generally about 160 to 165 feet deep before you hit water, so. Okay, Jordan. Must be the Jordan aquifer. That's not very deep. Mm -hmm. And that might be on purpose, too. Get the shallow aquifer if you got a problem here. You know, catch it before you get to the bottom. Yeah. Those, those are the ones that will react quicker. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Drilling wells is an expensive way to, to drill two wells, just strictly for monitoring? They've been there a long time. Um, there's, throughout the state, they've got a number of wells, some of them. Uh, when I was out in Yellow <coughs> Madison County, they had well, probably close to 10 that they would monitor um, every so often. Uh, and some of them were just like abandoned house wells and things like that. Um, yeah, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So. Wells are cheap to drill, and that's why I asked whether it's on top of the hill or in the valley. It'd be a lot less distance to drill if they drilled in the valley. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But not this. This is part of the um, state mandate that DNR does a, does more monitoring because some parts of the state have had a lot of issues with the groundwater level going way down, mm -hmm. and the state. I can't remember how many years ago. Quite a few years ago. Um, really got involved because people were, their, their wells were drying up and they were complaining that the DNR is allowing too much coming out for different things. Irrigation. Okay. Moving on to new business. Uh, district manager hiring process. <coughs> Lacey's here today to kind of guide us through this process. Good morning, Thank you everyone. For coming. Uh, my name is Lacey Conkel. I work at the personnel department in Winona County. I've worked there almost 12 years. The majority of that time I've been doing recruiting. Um, I'm excited to work with you and the uh, rest of the team. I worked with Daryl and hired Wanda and Lance, so I'm really looking forward to um, doing this next project. All right. Um, I put together a timeline. Has everyone received a copy of it? Um, it's just a plain Word document with the timeline on it. Okay. So I'm working with Wanda to approve all of the material that we uh, need to approve before we post the position. And we are on track to get it posted on Monday. Um, everything we determine ahead of time before we post it. 
um, the interview questions, um, what the posting will look like. Um, there will be some questions that the candidates will have to answer when they apply. We call those supplemental questions. All of those are determined before we post the position. Um, that assists in risk management so that no candidate can ever come back and say, hey, you know so-and-so and you wrote the interview questions for them after you've seen that they applied. So that's why we're doing all this work ahead of time to make sure that we have a um, fair and equitable process. Uh, so we're gonna take applications for three and a half weeks. Um, with the 4th of July holiday in there, I wanted to give a couple extra days in case someone sees it and then they'll have some time to apply. Wanda and I will, will work and uh, review the applications, uh, select the candidates to move forward for an interview. We have um, probably later in the week of July 17th through the 23rd that we'll hold interviews with the personnel committee, myself and Wanda. Uh, then after that, we'll um, have a, a finalist uh, that we'll um, I'll make some reference calls on, uh, put together the recommendation, and that will come back to you uh, at your August meeting. Okay. After that, after um, the final approval, um, wage, uh, then our team will pick back up with a conditional offer, um, a few background steps, uh, driver's license check, things like that. Um, and then to wrap it up, I gave an approximate start date um, in case the selected candidate needs to give a four week notice to their current employer. So it could be two weeks earlier if they only need to give two weeks. So. But that's that's the expected timeline. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Bill, does those interviews timeline framework with you? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I asked her to move it back from <coughs> Monday, Tuesday, I think it is Wednesday to Thursday, Friday, because I want to be gone the first part of that week. So. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, later then. Yep. and I'll be in touch fairly quickly. We'll make sure to get the get the date set on everyone's calendar, so okay. we're all ready yep. to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, people that are, you know, have been. Uh, I'm the vice chair of uh, Winona Watershed, oh. and uh, um, we'll. Will that uh, the entity will they be involved in in the process at all or? I was not uh, notified uh, that we were going to have that entity just a question. involved. Just yep. a question. <coughs> Pardon me. The Winona La Crescent. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't, wouldn't be involved with this hiring process, but whoever's hired will be involved with the Winmac. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? We at our last meeting in um, June, we made some recommendations on the uh, on the uh, job job interview or what yep. search we changes. Were, yeah. Was that? Uh, are you aware of them? Yep. <laughs> yes. Just in the wording, yes. yeah. And it got changed back to what it was because I'm assuming I didn't talk to you about that. But yep. when we got it back, Juan sent it to Bill and I, wasn't it, Bill? Yep. Yeah. That um, I was, was assuming that that was mandated that those that be worded like that and the requirements of degrees and such. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it basically reverted back to what it was. Okay. The wording will give you um, will give you a large amount of flexibility. Um, there there are ors in there. Um, you know, so if we have candidates that either have degrees or have work experience, um, it, it will take into consideration um, a larger number of candidates. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, no more questions? Thank you, and okay. we will you. keep in touch. All right, <laughs> thank you. Okay, lease for office space. Um, we thought we were going to have uh, these three guys to approve, but uh, it's not quite ready. I've been working with 
working on the lease, working on uh, looking at the feedback from MCIT and uh, and the county attorney. And the MCIT had a number of things that I sent on to Karen Sonneman, and she's working on that right now. She's hopefully hope, hoping to have a a modified proposal back to send to the landlords um, next week, and so we should have something for you guys next board meeting. Hopefully, I think I said that last month too, but <laughs> it is moving along. Um, it, there's just some, some things where we were put in the position of having all the um, liability and that really isn't, isn't appropriate. So I tried looking up um, leases where I could suggest some rewording and that didn't work very well, so I'm going to leave it in Harmon's hands. Okay, no board action at this time on that? So, yeah, we'll have it back on next month. Okay. Contribution agreement 2021 with uh, Whitewater River Watershed Joint Powers Board. So we need to approve the uh, contribution agreement, I guess is what it's called, but it's for their using our space in the office. Um, it, the only thing that's changed are some dates on there have changed. The, uh, we're already using the new rental rate with the landlord, so that's also part of this <coughs> agreement. And then we also, I think I forgot to mention, mention this to you, but we're not using the space for our CCM anymore because we have space after two left. Okay. So we're not sharing that space anymore. So I just need you guys approval. Move to approve. Second. <clears throat> Motion has been made to approve the agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. <clears throat> Motion carries. Old business, outstanding conservationists for 2021. So we, we did, uh, I think, you, Amanda, you talked to Selby's? Yep. And they accepted. Um, so after the meeting, Amanda's going to go out with Andy and Jerry. at least one of these yeah, <laughs> okay. yep. to uh, present them with the, with the sign. Um, we also will be doing a presentation at the fair at the recognition program in okay. July. So we, we need to know who's going to do that presentation. I think the last couple of years it's been Josh. I think he does a good job if somebody wants to be <laughs> 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 there. There's a slight possibility I might not be at that meeting. I <coughs> might have a conflict for that. But I, I told Juan I'd let her know as soon as I know. Okay. Somebody else can do it. I can be there to help if somebody <laughs> wants. But I've done it the last couple, two, three years, I think, haven't yeah, I? It's been Quite a few. So if somebody else wants to, it's a when does, does this happen? It happens in the afternoon after the meeting. So I have the meeting in the morning, and then the conservation yeah, award is in the afternoon. Two yeah, that. two, three o'clock, depending on because it's there's a whole series of things that happen. So when it's kind of your turn, depends on depends on who's uh, officiating the whole scenario. Because yeah, if that. Bob wants to talk a long time, then it goes long. He does a good job. Though. He does. Was it possible that if nobody wants to wait for that, that we do it at our meeting at the county fair? Uh, I no, would we're, we're on the uh, we're on the agenda. Agenda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll put together, we usually write something up and then Josh usually rewords it for us. <laughs> yeah, I put my own <laughs> spiel in there. Again. So we'll have something if somebody wants to just read it, they can. If they want to add it, they can too. I'll do it, Andy. Unless like somebody it. else really wants to do it. Okay. And I can be there with you too. Yeah, so. coach me through it. I'll appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did last year. <laughs> yeah, I think a couple of us did it yeah. earlier. Yeah, I don't know. Or the year before. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have a couple of people up there with mm -hmm. the presentation. I usually hang out because then I'll take that four to that late shift. I just basically take Thursday off. I take a day off and, and I just do all this. And then I do my Thursday and then. I did my part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, aquatic Invasive Species Program update. So we've got 
Joey here to give a presentation about himself. I'll try to be quick about it. I have to point it at the back of this thing, so oh, okay. I'll, I'll just tell me when you need me to move ahead. <laughs> um, so, Oh, I suppose it's just the first. Uh, I'll, I'll try to just like be as brief as possible and talk about kind of events that led me here with to work with you guys. Um, I grew up and was born in St. Paul. Uh, I was just, since I was a kid, I was just obsessed with dogs, and as I've grown up, that kind of evolved into just an obsession with all animals and life in general. Um, when I was in high school, I took an AP environmental science class, and that's what made me realize that I wanted to get into ecology for college. Uh, and then two years into my undergrad. I changed focus and started double majoring in environmental science uh, just because I realized how important you know, water and soil are to all life in general, uh, especially you know, humans and dogs. Um, and then I graduated Winona State University uh, with an environmental science and ecology degree in 2020. Uh, what I'm looking forward to the most is using the survey equipment, uh, you know, learning how to do land surveying, uh, learning more about regenerative agriculture, because I think that's pretty key to future farming. Uh, community outreach and education, especially with kids. Uh, learning how to use rain gauges, stream monitoring in general, hopefully water quality sampling as well. Um, software like ArcGIS, but mostly just mapping software in general, and just practicing my species identification. But I'm excited to learn. Hmm. Um, if you guys have any questions. What kind of a dog was it in the picture? West Highland Terrier. Cute. She's about six months old now, so a little bit bigger than that, but not too much. Mm -hmm. Good. Where do you live now? I, li I live in Winona. You live in Winona. Yeah, right across from the courthouse, so. What what led you to come down from St. Paul to Winona State? Did they have a good program for this? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, it was pretty serendipitous because I looked mostly around like a two-hour radius from the Twin Cities for colleges, and I just thought that the bluff country was so beautiful that I was kind of instantly smitten with the town. And I, I was lucky because the biology program and uh, the geology program, because of like the karst geology, and all of like the water sheds, like it's it's a pretty robust and uh, strong program at the university. Sounds good. Well, welcome to Winona yeah. County, and I hope you enjoy your Thank stay you. here with really us. Really appreciate it. Amanda's gonna work the heck out of you. Yeah, I hope she does. <laughs> I've been trying. Well, invest in some waiters. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, start out with the reports. Uh, Mr. Jacobs, would you like to start off? Uh, yeah, I don't have too much. Our meeting before last was our shortest meeting on record. It was past 10 minutes. Um, and then our meeting on Tuesday, we didn't really have anything that was, I guess, uh, related to the Water District. So, uh, same stuff, you know, working on the Working on the jail and jail windows, and but, so I don't have too much to report to you. Keep your meeting moving along, unless you guys have questions for me. So, no. I, I, just a quick question: Do you know if the county received the American Recovery Rescue American Rescue Plan? It, it, I think we're right close to it. Um, yeah, I think it's three. 3.9 million. The, the first half, the total yeah. was 9.7 million. Yeah, the first payment. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Originally they said it was supposed to come May 10th and they hadn't heard anything so I assume you guys haven't. No, um, wasn't on our agenda, but there, you know, I talked with the administrator briefly about it and it sounds like we're just you know, on, on the verge or, or close to okay. having the first payment to figure out how to distribute. So. Do yes. those amounts yeah. uh, include the township funds then too? That's no. Separate. Okay. Now our township wasn't able to use the money, so we turned it over to the county. Um, the, 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 the previous one, you mean? Well, that could be. I, I don't know which. 
the, this one, the county gets theirs directly from the federal, but the townships will have to get theirs from the state. Okay. And yeah. I don't know if the state's got theirs in either. One of the places where that might interact with uh, SWCD is uh, the funds are, one of the things are available for is infrastructure. So, you know, we're looking at trying to continue to build out high speed internet throughout the county, but um, septic systems would be uh, one of the things that would, that would fall under this infrastructure uh, that this money could be used for. So, um, and anyway, you have some involvement in that septic system, right? Yep. So, the county board will have to decide what the, what the kind of qualifications are for that money. Would that be like upgrading septic systems or uh, closing yeah. them down? Or? It, especially substandard systems. I think in the past, you know, we, we've had programs and monies available for that. Um, yeah, but it's been low, it's been for low income people. And um, I know some people have expressed to me that they don't want to disclose their finances. And, you know, so they, they'll just either wait on upgrading their system until they have enough money. Whereas if this system didn't, or the, these funds, uh, fell into a different you know, kind of parameter where uh, if your system is substandard, whether or not you have enough money or you, you're considered uh, poverty or low income, um, I, I think it you know, could potentially get more people to, to buy it on it. Because it puts it on the record who did it, and then they're automatically they're in that. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Some people just shy away from it. They don't want to disclose their finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, have, do you have any numbers on how Wenorn County is, is, is their uh, COVID vaccinations? Um, no, but I did get that. So every day we get a report on uh, positive, you know, how many positive cases and uh, how many deaths. And there's it's up to 59 or 51 deaths uh, that have occurred due to COVID. Uh, but yesterday there was zero positive cases, which was the first time I had looked at it um, since probably 16, 18 months ago or whenever it started, you know, there were days where it was, you know, in the 70s, 80s, routinely. So to have a zero positive cases was a new milestone for looking at that report. So, but I, I can't tell you. You probably could find that out if you called, uh, called into the county. Well, I'm just curious, because I know the, the fair is going on, steam mill days is going on, but for some reason, the chamber decided not to have family night at the farm this year, correct? Yeah, I think they decided that kind of pre, kind of early, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like the county, you know, turned the corner, so mm -hmm. yeah. I was kind of surprised that we're not having it this year. I know there's a, one or two area county fairs that decided, like, way early um, to not have their county fairs. Yeah, and kind of. One of them did change their mind. It did. Is it, is it still? Okay. Free, free barn. I know free barn. I talked about steel cow. That's a big fair. Uh, no. But one of them that, that said that back in I think April. Yeah. They they have reopened and said they're going to have it. Now. Good. Yeah. I was glad Winona County, you know, held off on their decision. And I mean, things seem to be getting you know close to you know much much more back to normal than, than what we've seen in a long time. So, yeah. And. I guess from the county's uh, standpoint, uh, we will start having planning commission and board of adjustment meetings in person, which we have only been virtual up to this point. So the next ones will be, you can come uh, into the into the county boardroom, and, and, but virtual will be uh, will also be available. So if you don't want to come, you can, you can just speak at the public hearing, but the actual board will be able to be there. So. Yeah. Kay is not here. Does anybody have any comments from her? Um, no, she didn't have any updates when I asked her this morning. Okay. And Sheila? Okay, Whitewater meeting is on June 17th. Um, and I still have on the agenda uh, this uh, 319 non-point source fund grant. Um, and Emily Zanone is checking every day to see if the EPA gives their stamp of approval on it, but right now I have it on the agenda and uh, hope to have that going really soon so we can start buying the equipment that needs to be purchased under that grant. 
and uh, that's all I have. Uh, we we started uh, surface water assessment monitoring. Um, just one little glitch is that evidently different from last year. Uh, we've been sending the samples via speedy to um, to the lab, and it goes to St. Cloud as their hub, and then it goes to directly to the lab. And they are having uh, staff shortages to the point where they don't have anybody manning the warehouse or the, at their hub after office hours. So office staff, the next day, unload the truck. So then now our lab samples are, especially our E. coli samples, they're arriving after their 30-hour holding time. So now we have to split out our samples and the E. coli goes UPS round because that will be in there within 24 hours. And then the other samples that don't have a uh, sensitive holding time are going in the slow boat to speed. So. I want to ask a question here, and I should have done this when I took over as chair. I, I've been calling everybody by their first name, and I'm just curious if everybody's okay with that or uh, did we, okay. I just assumed that, but I, I should have asked that. It's Mr. Elsing to you. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to keep the names Elsing, informal, sir. but I, I should <laughs> take into consideration everybody's thoughts. So, okay, I just Please thought I'd. Does the uh, time delay, does that change? Can that change E. coli? Um, well, the, the samples then, if they're late, they get flagged, and um, and the, they won't use that data if if the, all the other data shows that it's kind of borderline impaired or not impaired. Um, so it it just calls it it's it gets flagged you know, okay. basically. In fact, that's what I have to do an extra sampling this month because last year. In the month of June, one of our, um, for two of our sites, our E. coli samples were late, so I have to resample. Uh, but for the most part, it's been going well. I imagine that could continue to grow even though it's in a sample, right? Mm -hmm. And I imagine they have a percentage of that that does happen? Well, I think so. Um, and and the, the samples, they all arrive, they're still on ice, so that's good, but yeah. it's just outside of that holding time and <coughs> the lab doesn't like that. Okay. Sue with NRCS. Yeah. Um, I can report that our 5% uh, compliance spot check has been completed 100% and submitted. Um, I have had um, just one that was uh, and, uh, one that we're going to have to address out of the 16 that we completed, so that, that was good. Um, overall, um, most of the sites looked really, really good. A lot of no-till, a lot of green-till <laughs> for planting. A um, uh, lot of soybeans that looked like they got frost frosted and people were make, trying to make decisions whether to replant and some of them have made decisions to replant because the growing plant was froze off. Um, the corn did get hit, but I think that's recovered. Um, working on CRP compliance or expiring contracts, we have 48 that are expiring in 2022 um, and 68 that are expiring in 2023. We're doing site visits on all of them, 116 of them. We've got 80 of them completed, waiting for signatures, and have 36 left to complete. So most of the CRPs, a lot of them, quite a few of them are getting spot checked this year. They're looking really good. We only have one that has a tree issue, but other than that, I that they need to take care of some tree, voluntary trees, which that's part of the game when you're in CRP. Um, uh, two, we're gonna make payments on two grade stages that just got completed um, by SRF. Um, and the final video for Robert Prodemacher is completed, and I will be showing it to you guys um, next board meeting. If um, yeah, the right now it's still the draft. If I can get a um, slot, but it will be ready for next board meeting, so I should be able to show it to you. Um, Lance did a nope. great. Lance did a great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the next one that went August. August. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll do it in August. 
Um, Lance did a great job on the Luke Burger cover crop one, and I provided the pictures for the grazing part of the portion of it. Um, and he worked, they worked with Daniel um, Bailoff, or yeah, Bailoff, that did the crop Robert Crowdmarker's video as well. So then we're getting out there. They're being posted. Um, I'm using them quite a bit as educational for people to take a peek at. Um, I appreciate all the work that Daryl and Wanda did for the local work group. Um, I had medical leave that I was on, and they stepped up to the plate and did a lot of the work, and I appreciate that. Just thank you. And just to let people know also, um, I was contacted uh, Melissa Wagner from DNR. Um, on May 26th, there was a um, brown trout fish kill um, on, trout, on Trout Valley Creek, and they're investigating it. I know a little bit about it in regards to what, I mean, they don't, they're looking into, they took fish samples, they took water samples, they're looking into getting that stuff um, processed and back. Um, in regards to it, but that happened on May 26th. And it was right after um, a pretty substantial rainfall event. And um, they're looking at the entire watershed and anything that's contributing to that area. So. You said it, was only, it wasn't very many fish, right? Well, in 500 feet, um, they counted um, 37. So 37 fish in 500 feet, and then walking upstream, downstream, they got denied by one landowner, and there's well, things. You, they actually ended up giving them permission to, to go in. So, so was it was it like a hundred fish or thousands of fish or you know? No, it's it's a small amount. It's it's a very small. It's at the upper beach, so it's a very small stream there. So they think it could have been from a herbicide? Or they They're don't, looking into but it. But if they do the testing, that'll show up. It'll what show up. Yeah. What it was from. Yeah, I'm sure it depends on the timing. It depends on what it was. I mean, if it was um, so uh, insecticide it was an or herbicide, will show up in the water samples for sure. And it was a citizen that, you know, turned it in. Mm -hmm. so Where is this creek, Sue? Um, it's <coughs> Trout Valley. It's in the northern yeah. part of the county. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. It comes, it's the one on the east side of Whitewater that comes in to Whitewater just before it goes into the Mississippi. Okay. Just wanted you to be aware in case you hear, you know, about it. Okay. And, and Sue actually accidentally found out. Um, we we were not notified about anything. She accidentally found out and I got approached got a hold of them. <laughs> he and I are at the Give us some information on it. Yeah, and Melissa apologized. Melissa Wagner is who I talked to from the DNR. She apologized. She was fairly new. She had only been on the job a few weeks or whatever, so she really didn't know who she was all supposed to be contact. But I did supply her with our email addresses and also the FIBA officer's email address too. So I think in the future we'll do a little bit better job of getting more at all. But you know. They asked me questions and I helped them with landowner. They're trying to figure out the watershed, you know, certain landowners, something they couldn't identify. So um, we're looking at some of that for them, helping them that way. I, I would hope that um, there isn't, I think it's a, I, I guess I caution against any speculation um, until until it's actually known what the cause was because it kind yeah. of is like you're pointing fingers could be natural cause, could be oxygen, mm -hmm. low oxygen, or, and a lot of things that it could be. And, um, you know, someone could have dumped something. It could be agricultural, but uh, I think it, 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 it spurs a lot of kind of uh, controversy, one person against the other one. When, uh, I think until the yeah, wait, just findings wait, and just stuff are wait until totally the findings found what they come up with the and then because of the I read in one of the farm magazines that because of the fact that CRP acres are going down, <coughs> that the federal government's increasing the payments on that? Yep. Well, they have re um, submitted for a review and they are anticipating to increase the, acre, the rental rates 
on them, and I'm, I'm hearing it's substantial that they're going to be doing it. You know, it's going to be a pretty good hike in rental rates, but I haven't seen them yet. I've heard that it could raise as much as 20% based on your soil type and what it was at before. The cap previously, I think, was at like 180 or $200 an acre, and so that's going to go up by roughly 20%. So we could be looking at 240 or something as a high. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people up there that said, say that that's not really competitive. They're still getting 300 or something for rent. So um, kind of depends on who you are, what you're getting for rent, and um, things like that. So it, it'll be slightly more competitive than it was. Uh, next week, it sounds like hopefully FSA system will be up and running to start taking new. Um, offers, start running new scenarios. Anyone that had a submitted offer has to resubmit um, now that things are moving again. Um, but yeah, we, we've been in limbo for a number of months now, just kind of waiting to see what happens. Well, they haven't figured out all the rules yet. Yeah, so well, they've so got it figured out, it's just not written down yet. Yeah, and they haven't released the new policies and things like that. So. so if you guys are talking with anybody that says that they already applied for CRP and are waiting, let make sure they understand they have to reapply. Because okay. yeah. all the previous them. bids have yeah. been deleted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, supervisors, you want to start out, Josh? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to kind of yield. It's just been an interesting spring, and we'll see where it all goes. So, and a lot of more. I thought it started off good, then we got the cold snap, and that kind of brought in a whole new mess. So, Still dealing with it. So, as long as it's it. Good. Um, yeah, I don't want to let this meeting go by without referencing the fact that we made national news on maybe some of the people, or maybe nobody knows it besides me and Lance, but uh, the National Association Conservation District news clips which come out every couple weeks, I believe. Um, the, there was an article in there this last time about Lance and Sheldon Lumen, is it? Um, with their no-till and cover crops. Uh, very interesting, and I'm pretty proud that that was in there. And I want to thank Lance for, and he's not here. <laughs> I was hoping he was here to talk about it more because that's uh, quite an accomplishment to get that in there. Um, it's all over the United States. Every conservation district in the United States is um, eligible to have an article and probably less than a half a percent ever make it. So. I just want people to know that and look it up on the NACD conservation clips. That was also in the window on shop. Yeah, 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 that would have been the article. Yeah. Leo, uh, I have nothing this month. Bill, I got nothing. Okay. Um, so I don't forget for Daryl. Is there any report that you got on the safety? days that you did? Oh, um, yeah, so our second safety day went on without a hitch. Everything worked really smoothly. Uh, the kids absolutely loved it. Uh, my son's school was part of it, and so when I was picking him up from school, a girl came up, you're the one that did the presentation. That was awesome, you know, and they, they really loved it. Uh, uh, just kind of fun to follow up. Some of the teachers sent in their pictures and stuff in the classrooms doing the activities and things like that, and it, it's just kind of heartwarming, you know, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Lewis and Altura, they had their classes come out and receive the bags, and we got some nice pictures there. So it worked out really nice, and they are so appreciative of it. Uh, they're all looking forward to being outdoors at Farmers Park next year, so mm -hmm. hopefully we can keep on moving with it here. So. Okay. Daryl? Uh, just a little bit more on um, the cover crop stuff. Lance, the, this tour that we have, um, the, the cover crop tour, Lance took the was it the FFA mm -hmm. or just the A class? It's both. It's both. Mm -hmm. um, FFA and, and A classes from Lewiston out to some of those sites. Actually, Joey, you went with. Uh, yeah, I took, I took photos and such. Yeah. And it sounds like that went really well. We had a lot of, a lot of questions and a lot of good discussion. Um, also, 
Lance has done some videos with NRCS that I think are those public posted now or are those yep, there's a link. So on our um, NRCS. I'll I'll make sure I don't know if we have them on our YouTube site or otherwise I'll try and link them on our website too. They they were really good. Very very good, very well done. Um <coughs> Also, just wanted to let you know that I, I'm assuming you guys all know that there's still no state budget, so we don't know what kind of funding we're getting yet from the state. But I believe there's supposed to be a special session on Monday. I don't know if, if that's still in the schedule or not, but hopefully that happens and we get something and start getting a better idea of where we're sitting for 2022. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on the American Rescue Plan, and there's, as Steve said, there's some chan chances that we might be able to get some funding through that. Um, hopefully it's not needed, but if it is needed, I think we have some chances. You know, I've been putting together notes and stuff for down the road in case we do need some of that. Um, also, I've just been working on some notes and instructions and things like that for, for the staff and the interim manager and future manager to help keep things running smoothly in the transition over the next couple months. Okay. Committee and appointment meetings. Um, you guys have your local work group meeting here at 11. Is there anything from the last one or anything you guys need to tell us about? That's only once a year, okay. so. Do you think we're going to go two full hours on that? I don't think we need. It's up to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, we allow two hours. And can we start early? Because I think we're going to get done early. Not really. Well, we stretched this out yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we, we might have other people coming that are. Yeah. Here today yeah. this meeting. Okay, um, Bill, you got a meeting on June 14th. Yep. You got anything from the last one? You have them every month? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, for the next 32 months. Something. <laughs> <laughs> are you counting or what? That's a lot of them. Well, they sent out, you know. When are they yeah. going to start in real? <laughs> it's like a prison I, term. I have that on the agenda for Monday's meeting. Yeah, yeah. I'm anticipating that they'll say, yeah, let's do it in person. The only stipulation is, I think Bowser staff are still... State still has to work virtual. Right. Um, so at least through the end of the month, I believe. Okay. Unless, some, unless the governor changes something for that. Yeah, so that, one, that was the kind of the unknown that I wasn't sure when their deadline is and when they can be mm -hmm. present at meetings. So we'll, ha we'll discuss it on Monday. Yeah. But this is our third, was our third? Was our third meeting? We've been having these since January. Right. <laughs> It'll be our sixth one. Yeah. For the one one well, or well, How many did you come to? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not enough. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we'll also so be uh, introducing or presenting the consultant. Yes. And he's going to Okay. Then ball meeting. On June 16th, Whitewater. Say, um, on the ball meeting, I don't know if you noticed that's at 9.30 instead of 9. Oh, it says 9 here. So. Yeah, I, we just got the notice for the Monday or Tuesday. And it's, it, for some reason, they changed it to 9.30. Okay. Yeah, and they're going to have a website for me to get out to? Yep. Okay. Um, Whitewater Joint Powers Board, Helsing, June 17th. Root River, yep. Monday, June 21st. Southeast MASWCD Area 7 Resolutions. Um, over in Austin. Do you guys know who's going to go? They're, they're going to provide both in person and virtual, but they need a head count for who's going to be there in person. How soon do they need it? Because we usually, usually go to that. But yeah. the 18th is, is the deadline. He asked if he could get it quicker than we could. I'm planning on going. Yeah, I'm going. 
I'll try. And you're all talking in person, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we'll meet up here at like quarter after seven that morning. Oh, I'm going from my place. It's an hour and a half. Right. <laughs> so. Well, oh, it's June it 22nd. I mean, coffee starts at nine. Starts at nine thirty. Oh. If you leave here at eight. Okay. Are you there to be fine? So you want me to eight then? And that's seven forty-five here. Seven forty-five here. Okay. Make a motion to allow the supervisors to attend the Area Seven resolution meeting. Second. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed <coughs> nay. Motion carries. That's nine to three. Okay. So the meetings in the morning, um, in the afternoon they're doing a, a field trip up to. Sites, I think. You guys can make a whole day of it. Mm -hmm. you guys can make a whole day. So if you do a virtual meeting, I think it would just be the morning. <clears throat> Winona County Fair, July 7th through the 11th. Um, do you want to pass around the sign up sheet to the supervisor so okay. someone knows exactly when they want to work? Does everybody have one of these? No, you can Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you go, Josh. Yeah. Stuff. If we get everybody at least one, um, two would be great. Do we really have to stay there until 10 o'clock at night? Yes. It's usually about 10 30. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> Fall asleep. We'll cheat the system, Leo. <laughs> we'll get you a little cot behind the drape, <laughs> Leo. We'll poke at you when it we get It gets pretty you. slim around yeah. after. Depends on what night you're there. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them with a the grandstand them piece that gets full. Yeah, I guess. Two minutes. Anything else on the county fair, Wanda? Just a presentation at 2, the meeting at 9. 8 or 10. Meetings at 10. Oh, okay. And I think usually the, the board buys staff dinner at the fair. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that part of it? <laughs> Other than signing up for the work schedule, is there anything else for the meeting today? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned.